Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online broadcast and worship experience. We thank God that you're showing up here today. Listen, you can be on many other platforms, but you are here today. So we thank God for you showing up. For all of our Spirit of Fire family, we love you guys. We appreciate you so much. And want to give you this opportunity to go ahead and click your shares, set up your watch parties, let people know that we're on. We're asking everybody to let someone know that, that we're on. Invite somebody to come to your church today. Invite them to come in to hear the word of God that will transform and that will change their lives. It is so vitally important that we as believers begin to share our faith with others. Bring them on in for people that have never heard of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Bring them on in for people who want a greater walk with God. Bring them on in for those that want to understand the word of God in a greater light. Bring them on in. And listen, we want to welcome everyone with open arms. Everyone is welcome here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship. And we just want to show you how much we love you, how much we appreciate you. So all of our first timers, we want you to, we're going to minister this word to you today. And I believe that God will minister to your hearts and that there will be something that will be shared that will transform and that will change your lives. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to everyone today and thank God for you tuning in today. Hey, y'all, listen, we're going to go ahead and jump into this today. We're going to have a quick word of prayer. And so one of the things that we want to do is we want everybody to just be locked in and tuned in. We want you to receive what's being said, to be open to hear the word of God. There is no distance in the spirit. And what that means is the same God that's here with us is the same God that's there with you. And so that we can connect one with another, even virtually through this virtual platform. And so we just want you all to just have the mindset of being open and ready to receive this engrafted word. What, that, what does that mean? That means the word as the word of God is preached and that you're receiving it. It will become embedded in you to the point it helps to transform your thinking to begin to believe it and to apply it to your everyday life in a practical and an effective manner. And so we're here to love on you. And one of the things that we just want to tell you today is we thank God for you being here. So let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Let's jump into this. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords. Think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word. We do approach the holy written word of God reverently. And we just thank you for every heart being open, every mind being ready to receive this engrafted word. And so we give you praise. Now, Holy Spirit, you are the great teacher. You are the great comforter. You're the great counselor, the one ready to give us peace. Minister to the hearts of the people today. Flow through me. We covet your gifts to be an operation and demonstration so that somebody's life will be transformed and changed. And Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory and the honor for it now. We pray for healing in people's lives, mental health, physical health, financial well-being, relationships, that things will be mended, restored, and brought to a place of wholeness and health and strength. For people that have been struggling with their purpose, their destiny, their calling, I ask that you manifest yourself to them, that you reveal to them what it is that they were created for and how to get the job done. So Father, we thank you for it. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor for it now, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, y'all. We are still in our series dealing with extreme faith. Um, this is something, you know, um, I'm going to minister and sow this word into you. Um, as I begin to deal with this subject and start, we start dealing with this topic, you know, the same word that's ministering to you is ministering to me. And a lot of times and all the time when God tells me to begin to share and begin to teach on the series, it first hits me. It hits my heart. It, it hits my mind. And he has me going over some things and, and he starts working things in me. And then the same token, now it comes and I release it to you guys. Uh, but during this particular time of dealing with extreme faith, God is challenging us to stretch our believing him for greater and for more. 
Um, a lot of times you can be watching other people and seeing what God is doing in their lives. And then all of a sudden now you begin to wonder, God, what about me? When is something like that, that going to happen in my life? Well, it begins to happen when you first receive this word or believe the word and then begin to apply it to your life. And so you'll never see the supernatural if you never step out and believe for it. And so God is saying, I want you to believe bigger of me now. I want you to begin to believe me for something that you can't do in and of your own natural ability that I have to get involved with this thing. Now, one of the things by, about faith is faith just receives or appropriates to your life or applies to your life what Jesus already died for you to have. So it's already there. Now, it may be in the unseen world. What, what do I mean by that? This spiritual world, because the spiritual world is just as real as the natural. Because really everything was birthed out of the spirit. What we see now came out of God himself. This earth, everything, his creation came out of him. And so now we got to understand that even as we begin to function by God's rule, God's system. And one of the things is I was meditating on this last night or early this morning, I got up and I began to just go over this stuff and go over my notes and kind of just getting ready and meditating and thinking about some things. One of the things that God reminded me of was this. Remember the word that I told you for this year. It's the kingdom renaissance. And the, a kingdom renaissance, it, it's a thing where God's sphere, in other words, God's principles, God's way of doing things is coming to the forefront in our lives. We begin to apply these rules and principles. And so now the kingdom of God um, is God's, like I said, God's sphere, God's rule, or God's influence. But I believe that word kingdom is actually the word basilius. And in that word basilius, it really means technically the principles, the laws, or the rules that govern how God does things. So now we now are a kingdom. The Bible says we're kings and priests unto our gods. And so this word, because as a king, that also comes from kingdom, the king's domain. So the king is basilius the king the way we rule it means to be preeminent it means to be um top in your field it means to do the best of what it is that you've been called to do to be excellent in all that you do and so we're going to use god's system god's rules god's principles and as i begin to sit down and write one of the things god reminded me of was this remember how you believed me in the beginning remember how you believed me for your first car he brought that up to me it's the same principles that you use to believe me for that first car. It's the same principle that you use to believe me for the ministry, to believe me for the house, to believe me for the increase, to believe me for the healing. It's the same principles of faith. The only thing that changes is the thing you're believing for, but the principle is the same. And so if we function in God's principles, we need to become proficient in faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. And we are the just, those that have been declared righteous. When you receive Jesus as your Lord, you have been declared righteous. And as the righteousness of God, we are to live by faith. We've been saying this, that everybody should have a faith project that you're working on. Something that you're constantly challenging your faith, stretching your faith, believing God for greater, believing God for more. The reason why it has not changed is because you have not changed. And that's what God is saying. He says, listen, you can receive it just like everybody else did. God is not a respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith. And so he says, you cannot bypass living by faith as a believer on Jesus, as a Christian. We all need to learn these principles. And so when he told me to start dealing with this, how to now minister and get your faith to a high level, uh, the highest level that you can, where you begin to stretch and begin to grow and begin to increase. Now, I, I want to I say something. I want you to begin to do this because as I'm talking, stuff is coming to me. I want you to begin to find something that you believe in God for. Write it down. Make it plain. When you find out whatever it is you're believing for, I want you to find two to three scriptures that pertain to the thing that you're believing for. So when you write down what it is you're believing for, be specific with God. Don't be vague. You believe for vague, you'll get vague. You believe for specific, you'll get specific. I remember when he told me when I believed for my first car, I remember I wrote down verbatim what it was I wanted. 
I wrote down, now I didn't have the make or the model of the car, but I had the description of the car. I wanted a black car, four door, sunroof, power everything, nice sound system in it. I wanted it to be low maintenance. I wanted it to be good on gas. I mean, I was very specific with God. And everything, and even to the amount I was willing to pay per month for it, because I knew what I was bringing in and I knew what I could handle. Now, at that time, I could have believed them for debt free, but God will meet you where your faith is. And so he wants us to bump it up. And I mean, almost to the penny. I was believing. I remember it was like the I was believing God to pay no more than two hundred and ten dollars. But the actual payment was two hundred ten dollars and fifty six cents. I, I, I'll never forget that because God, he put it right there. And I said, I wanted to be able to use my own money to, you know, without help. The only thing I had at that time, I needed a cosigner and my mom cosigned for me the very first car I got. But that was something where I believed God for. It. And it was my own personal testimony. And it was a thing that I followed God's word. I followed the principles of faith. I saw what God said in his word. I put them to the test. I sowed seeds um, towards that goal. I was believing for that car. I will find there were times where the spirit of God will show up and he'll say, so into this ministry. I remember at this one particular time, there was a well-known minister um, and he was ministering online on, um, uh, on the radio. And so he had a radio ministry. Back then, we would listen to the radio ministries a lot back in the day. So, and I remember the Spirit of God said, I want you to sow a $200 seed into this man's ministry and name it for your car. And I remember doing that. And then I remember God saying, okay. And I remember hearing faith without works is dead being left alone. So then all of a sudden, I said, okay, that means I got to step out and I got to go do something. I got to go look for the car. I just can't sit home and just be praying. It's like the women believing for Peter to get out of jail. They, they're praying. Peter gets released, comes knock on the door, and the people still in there praying. They still praying for Peter, but the answer at the door, knocking at the door. And so somebody had to open up the door to receive in the answer that they had been praying for. And so one of the things God said was step out, go for it. And this is the thing. I was specific before God. I went before God. I asked him for that thing. I believed I received it. And when I believed I received it, the first time that I prayed, I didn't keep asking him for it. I asked him one time for it. See, the thing is, if you constantly asking God for the same thing over and over again, it means that you did not believe the first time that you asked. And so you got to believe it by faith. So I believed I received it. But what I did after that, I began to thank him for it. And say, Father, I thank you for my new car. And I wrote that thing out and had it on paper. And I declared and decreed over that paper, I believe I received this car in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you for it. And I give you praise for it. And then as God led me, I sowed seed concerning it. And then I began to step out and go look for it. And then the first car I found, because now, watch this, anxiousness can kind of set in. And now you become impatient. Remember, the Bible says through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. And so now patience is we always call it like the bridge that your faith walks across from the point of I believe I receive it to there it is. What does that mean? Patience means to be consistent. It means to be constant. It means to be the same. And so I, every day I just begin to say, Father, I thank you. Even as my mom would drive me to work and pick me up from work, or I would use her car to go here and there and everywhere. I begin to say, Father, I thank you for my own. I give you praise for it in Jesus name. And then I said, all right, mom, I need for you to take me to go look for this car now. And so the first car, now this is the interesting thing though. This is the thing. The first car I saw, and I was ready to buy. I think it was a silver four door car, no power windows or power locks. And it was like, it was none of the stuff. The only thing is that it was four door. And it was like, you know what? That wasn't the car. Somebody came and bought that car. No, th that was the second one. The first one I went to was a two door um, burgundy car, no sunroof. And it was like, it was nothing that I was believing for, but I just wanted something. And so then what happens is because of anxiousness and because now the Bible says be anxious, anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, 
make your request known unto God and the peace of God shall pa that passes all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind. Then all of a sudden I went back to get that car. Now this is the funny thing. That car was about $3,000 more almost than what I was willing to pay for, what I was believing for even. And so now when I went back to get the car, somebody had come by and bought it. So, you know, I was a little upset. The fact that I was ready to get a car and the car that I picked out, somebody came and got it. Then all of a sudden now I see another car. That was the four door silver car, something like that. Then all of a sudden it was like, no, nah, that's not the car. That's not what I'm believing for. And God, the spirit of God had to convict me about that. Don't get off of what you're believing for. Don't get off of it. And I remember looking at the newspaper and in this newspaper was this small article. I went into the, the auto section, the car sales, and it was a small thing that it said it was a Volkswagen Jetta, a four door. And I think it gave a little, it was like a real small thing. And it gave a small description of it. And so I asked my mom, I said, can we go there on, on Saturday? Can you take me there to look at it? So she took me there and I'm telling you, I got in that car and started driving it and took it for a test drive. It had every single thing I had on my list. I mean everything to the point that I could also pay for it myself. I think that all they asked for a down payment was $200 or something like that. And I had that in my bank account. I was working. I was working and also going to school. And so listen, I'm telling you, these principles work. And I remember, man, I had to wait two days because they had to finish up everything. And that payment came in. When I saw that payment, I said, glory to God. God, you are faithful. I was not only to take care of that, but I could take care. See, and see, these are the other things. I counted the cost. I was able not only to take care of the car, but the insurance and the maintenance that went along with having the car. So you got to remember everything that goes with what you're believing God for. And so I was very specific with God. And I remember, I remember, I think it was raining actually that day. It was drizzling a little bit. And I was going down, is here, it was called Midlothian Turnpike. And I remember I picked up that car and I opened up my sunroof. I didn't care that it was even drizzling a little bit. I rolled down every window and I shouted as I was driving down the street, Father, thank you. Glory to God. Why? This was the first big thing that I believed God for. And God brought it to pass. All I did was took the principles that my pastor taught me coming up and I applied it to my life and I saw the doggone results. And God reminded him, he said, the same way you believe me for that is the same principles that you use. It's the principle of faith. Listen, listen, say it, do it, receive it and tell it. I begin to speak that word. I begin to declare, thus saith the Lord, your word says this, Father, about this. And then I stepped out on faith and had a level of corresponding action. I went out and began to look for what I was believing for. When you in expectation, you prepare to receive what it is you believe in for. And so, man, I remember I shouted and I shouted and I shouted. And I remember, I will never forget that day. I will never forget that moment. Why? Because it was the moment that God and I, that we worked together on this project. That was my first real faith project that I remember believing God for something. And I'm telling you, the same is true now. God is saying the same way, the same way that you applied my word, the same way that you had to operate and function by faith. It's the same way. Listen, the principle does not change. The object may change. The, the, the destination may change of what you're trying to get, but the principle remains the same. It is a law. A law is an established principle that will work for anybody that gets involved with it. And so God is saying, I need you to stretch now. I need you to begin to believe bigger now because the same God that you trusted to get you that car is the same God that can now manifest that building. Your faith, your faith applied to whatever situation can cause transformation and change. All right, I just wanted to say that I ain't planning on saying that testimony. It just came on up in me. But uh, listen, I, I believe it's important for us to hear. Whatever it is you believe in for, there is supply and there is sufficiency for it. God is saying this, that everything you need is already available. I don't care how much of it you need, how many of them you need. Everything, everything that you need that pertains to life and godliness is already available. 
It's already there. And now we just got to apply our faith. And it's time to release our faith. Release your faith for something. And you need to hold yourself accountable to what you're believing for. Let somebody know, this is what I'm believing for. So they can help you. If you start getting weary and well-doing, they can say, don't you dare give up. They'll tell you, don't you stop believing God. Don't you stop trusting God. Don't you stop declaring your faith. Don't you stop that thing. And the same God. The same God will manifest for you in Jesus' name. Hey, glory to God. I'm getting, man, shoot. That, that message right there is it. That, <laughs> you can take that and just start working it. You can take that and just start working it. Work your faith. Work your faith. Yeah, Lord, I hear that. Work your faith. Work your faith. Work your faith. Work your faith for your new home. Come out of that apartment into your house. Work your faith. Come off of it. Come out of that office space into your new building. Work your faith. No matter what. Listen, you can live debt free. Listen, there is debt freedom that's available to you. That listen, I'm telling you. Listen, you can start off. Oh, come on, come on now. All right, let me go with this. You can start off paying for it and then believe God to accelerate the process to wipe the debt payments out. You can start off, start small, and but but listen, but believe big. And listen, if you can believe for it, and listen, okay, come on. I, I, it's just racing through me right now. Come on, Mike. Watch this. Listen to what he's saying. You can believe God to start where you are. Start where you are. Your faith, God will meet you where your faith is. You got to understand the difference between faith, foolishness, and presumption. Sometimes what happens is we put ourselves in a box based off of the words that we've heard from others. Just because one man's testimony is this and another's testimony is this does not mean that's how your testimony is going to be. Don't put yourself under bondage because now, you know, we preach against debt in the sense of God wants you debt free. Yes. But listen, everybody's faith isn't there at the moment. You might have faith to believe God to be able to make the payments every month. Listen, it's still faith. You still growing it. Just go from where you currently are. Sometimes people saying, wait a minute, I'm believing for this debt free thing and it's $50,000. And you know what? You know what? Right now, you got to be honest with yourself. Can you really believe for that? Or can you believe to now receive the money, pay for it, and now knock it out over a period of time? You still receive the thing. You still receive the vehicle. You still receive the home. And now you can still enjoy the home and the vehicle while you believe in and releasing your faith to pay it off. God is with you on each step of the way. The same God that's there to pay for the whole thing is the same God. He's still paying for the whole thing. You just believe them in increments. Listen, do what you got to do. Don't let somebody put you under bondage and make you feel condemned and bad because maybe you're not on their level of faith at that time. And they didn't tell you they had to build up to that point. And so I'm telling y'all, stop beating yourself up trying to accomplish this great thing. But listen, you can start small and still arrive there. Just do what you can where you are. Exercise your faith. Don't, listen, everybody don't go into the gym punching, pressing 500 pounds and 600 pounds and doing 30,000 squats and 20 miles on the treadmill. Listen, if all you can do is one mile walking, you do what you can do. Start where you are. Start, listen, start where you are. But God says start. You got to move now. I'm telling you, there's an account. It might be in Kings. I, I forgot where it was the lepers that said, wait a minute. If we stay here, we're going to die. If we go into the city, they might kill us, but substance and food is there and supply is there. So it's almost like this. We got to bust a move one way or another. So it's like, if, listen, what do we have to lose? Because if we don't do anything, we're going to die right here where we currently are. If we do something, it just might work out. It just, listen, what if it does work? All you keep thinking is what if it doesn't? But what if it does? What if you blow up? What if you just, I mean, God used you to go all across this planet. Listen, just to do one thing, just step out, do it, do it, do it. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but my goodness, he says, step out, do something with what you got. Do something with what you got. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. And so we're going to do this thing by faith. By faith, by faith, we believe that we receive. By faith, that's how you declare. Spirit of Father, I've, been, I've declared it. We believe we receive 10,000 active adult partners, supporters, and members worldwide who give, pray, support, serve this ministry on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. 
We believe we receive the buildings and the infrastructure that we need to support the vision and to manifest it. We call in the gymnasium. We call in the equipment. We call in the workers. We call in everybody from the north, the south, the east, and the west that are top in their fields and that we're well able to compensate. That for, Yeah, we declare these things in Jesus' name. We declare it. We declare with long life we satisfied and God shows us his salvation. We declare that we live long and that we live strong. And I declare you're going to live long enough and you're going to live strong enough to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Though your beginning was small, yet shall your latter end greatly increase. Glory to God. And listen, for those, I don't care how long it's been. See, your faith has been deferred. And usually hope deferred, the Bible says, makes the heart sick. And because things that you hoped for, but you didn't really believe for it, you just hope that it might happen. But now God says, I need to step it up to where you believe you receive what you've been hoping for all along. Hope is a goal setter, but faith brings what you hope for into the now. Now I believe I receive it. I have it now. I walk in it now. I believe it now in Jesus' name. And when you begin to think like that, it's a matter of time till you begin to see. Watch this. Why? Because your believing will begin to move you into acting. See, that's corresponding action. You will act out on what you believe. Whether it's in fear or whether it's in faith. See, you are hoard versus given when you walk in fear. Fear of running out. Fear of not having enough. And when God shows up and says, will you give me all or even a portion of what you've been saving up? But God, I'm saving this up for my down payment on my house. And God may say, I need you to help build this man's ministry over here. And God, he might require the whole thing. Or he, he may say, will you give me a portion of it? Because watch this, I want to do something for you. And God will never ask you to do something that he is not required and not obligated himself to bring it back to you. Good measure, press down, shake together and running over. God will cause men to give unto your bosom. He'll cause the money to come in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Whoever said no, your yes is somewhere. Somebody is ready to give you what you've been believing for. So you better go ahead and step out. You will never meet that individual if you never step out and believe God. And I'm telling you, God already has your supply. God already has your sufficiency. God already has everything that you need. I don't know about you, but I'm preaching to myself right now, glory to God. And I'm stirring my faith up. And listen, you got to stir it up. He said, oh, I see that. It's like if you don't speak it, you'll never stir up anything to happen. And watch this. The scripture says when Jesus went and preached to the people, he says not being mixed with faith, it did not profit them. Because when you can hear the word, but you don't mix your faith with it, you will never see what's being prophesied. You will never see. Because see, some of you are thinking prophecy just works like it's just going to automatically happen. But sometimes a prophetic word, a rhema word from God works just like the logos word, the written word of God. Listen, I can preach God's word to you, but if you don't believe it, if you don't receive it, you'll never act out on it. I'm telling you, I've seen this happen in my life. Let me give another testimony. I'm telling you, I remember this guy prophesied over my life years ago at 16 years old. And I remember I wrote down that prophecy. I got the cassette tape and I also got a videotape of that prophetic word that man spoke over my life. I wrote that thing out verbatim and I began to meditate on it. I began to speak it. I could quote it verbatim and I listened to it over and over and over again out of the book of, I think it's first Timothy four. It talks about don't let any man despise thy youth, but be an example of the believers. See, watch this. My wife gave that to me as a, as a, before we even started dating each other, she gave that to me as an encouraging word. Don't let people despise your youth. Don't let anybody, I'm telling you. And I begin, he says this, give yourself wholly to those things. Meditate on those things that were spoken to you when the presbyter laid their hands on you and prophesied over you so that your profiting may appear unto all. And I begin to, listen, I begin to meditate on that word. And I begin to see every single thing that man prophesied over my life came to pass. Why? Because I applied my faith to his obedience to speak. My faith met his obedience. That word that came out of his mouth got into my heart. I meditated on it, got my mind aligned with God's will and plan for my life. And I began to see every single thing that man spoke over my life has come to pass. Every single thing. And I'm telling you, God's word works. 
So you'll say stuff like, well, pastor, I thought you said this, that God prophesied that this was going to happen last year and it ain't happened yet. And you said that the year before. And you said that. Well, did you believe it? Did you believe it? Did you apply your faith? Did you do what you were supposed to? And that's one thing I, I've heard and I've come to understand. Everybody don't hear everything when the word it comes forth. Because sometimes there's a cause and effect to it. And sometimes I, I remember God says, if you do this, then this will take place. Or if you obey this aspect, then this will happen. And all people hear is what's going to happen. But they fail to believe and they fail to hear the part they had to play in it. And God is saying this. You are responsible for where you currently are and what you currently receive receiving. You can transform and change your life. You don't need a man to come into your life, single mother, in order for you to get your brand new house. You can get the brand new house with your with your main man, Jesus. He'll help you wherever you need to go. I know, I know, I know you want companionship, you want love, but sometimes you're thinking God can't take care of you like some man can. God will take care of you better than any man can. And I'm telling you, you need to trust him, the lover of your soul, the author and the finisher of your faith. If he began a good work in you, he going to complete that thing in the name of Jesus. Glory to God, man. I'm <laughs> Who glory to God. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is the message you need to hear today is to get your faith stirred up. Get your faith. Come alive again. Come alive again. Get out. Yeah, come alive again. Come alive again. Don't you worry about no COVID. Get out the house. Do something. Listen, I can't tell you so many believers or quote unquote believers so busy walking in fear, doubt and unbelief. Fear is the robber. Doubt is the thief of God's greater blessing. Listen, you got to get that fear out of you by pouring in God's word and feed your fear and your doubts to death. Get that stuff out of you. Pour into you. God is for me. Who can be against me? Listen, with all things, listen, all things are possible to him that believe it. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, listen. Listen, this is why, watch this. Now I'm going to settle down and say a, a statement to you. Discipline will keep you when motivation leaves you. Discipline will keep you when motivation leaves you. Now I want to add this in with that. Discipline in principles will keep you and cause manifestation when the, the, the emotional drive behind it goes. Because that means sometimes you'll feel like doing it, sometimes you won't. Sometimes you'll feel like believing God, sometimes it feels like he's right there with you, and sometimes it feels like he ain't nowhere around. Just because it feels that way does not mean that's the truth. The truth is, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. The truth is, he says, I'm going to make my home in you, I'm going to abide in you, I am your God, you are my people. See, your body is the temple of the living God. You ain't got to keep asking God, God, come here. Come here and visit us. He already there with you on the inside. You just got to believe it. See, this is, these are things that stir up your faith. These are things that you remember that God is with me and God loves me. And with my fellowship with the Father, me spending time with God causes me to have this mindset that God, you know what? You'll never leave me nor forsake me. You says you're with me even to the very ends of the earth. Father, I thank you for it, that I'm confident and I'm bold in this fact that you started this thing in me and now you're going to work with me as my partner in faith, my partner in faith to manifest everything. I'm telling you, man, to manifest everything. Glory to God. Everything. Glory to God. Yeah, everything. Glory to God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord is the strength of my life. See, joy comes from what you know. See, I just begin to preach and that joy begin to rise up because I reminded myself of who my God is and who I am in him. He's told me that. He said, if you can believe me, if you can believe me, all things are possible. See, some of you know that God can do it. Some of you understand just how big and powerful he is. But the problem that you have is believing will he do it for you? See, it's easier for you to pray with somebody else and believe with their thing that they believe in for than believe for your own thing. Why keep, why keep, God is saying, stop bringing me down to your ability and come up to the ability that I've already placed in you. Come up hither, sit with me. You already seated in heavenly places, so let your mind come up to where your spirit already is. Hallelujah. Well, I just went on into this. <laughs> man, who? Glory to God. I feel like I just had to get that out, man. 
See, what I was doing last night, I was pouring faith into me. I was listening to faith messages. Just getting out, getting my faith stirred up. That's what you got to do. You got to build your faith up. Feed your faith. Feed it. Feed it. Your spirit man feeds off of spiritual food, which is the word of God. Feed off of it. Messages that stir up your faith. Amen. I declare my voice carries great weight across this planet. My words produce power that transform and change every environment I go into. Glory to God. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet from Mike May, baby. You ain't seen nothing yet from Raquel May. You ain't seen nothing yet from Alexis May and John Michael May and Alicia May. The May family, the May name is well known. The May name has integrity attached. The main name has wealth and increase associated with it. Wealth and riches are in my house and in my family and in my lineage. That's what I declare and decree that we all walk in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We all love God. We all submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We all honor the Lord. We all submit unto the fear of the Lord. We all walk in abundant increase of favor. Everywhere I go, somebody looking to bless me and I'm looking to bless others. God is raising up people to use their power, their resources and their influence to assist you and to help you and to assist me and to help me. And at the same time, God is raising me up. He is raising my wife and I up. He is raising my family up for us to use our power, our resources and our influence to assist and to help others. We're the ones in control. We're the ones that rule in this earth. We are kings and priests unto our God. We are ambassadors for Christ. And wherever we go, we dominate, doggone it. Wherever we go, we demonstrate the love of God. Wherever we go, sicknesses and diseases are healed. People are set free. Minds are being renewed. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, guards our hearts and our minds through and by Christ Jesus. Man, I wish I had a Hammond B3 organ with me right now. I feel like preaching. I feel my Baptist preaching coming on. My Baptist robe, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, my God, my God, my God. Man, I'm telling you, you can't listen, listen, man, you can do all things with faith. You can do all things with faith. You can do all things with faith. Stir yourself up by saying that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things, everything, anything, all things. There is nothing too hard for my God. There is nothing too hard for my God. Cancer ain't too hard for my God. God is here. Jesus healed cancer just like he healed a common cold. Listen, it don't matter. From AIDS to multiple sclerosis to I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care venereal disease. I don't care physical disease. I don't care uh, 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 mental illnesses, whatever it is. God can bring people into their right mind just like that. Whether it's a demonic force behind it that needs to be cast out or physical healing that needs to take place. My God, my God, my God sent his son to take on the sins of the world. And with that, he took on sickness and disease. And I'm telling you, every disease is covered under the blood of Jesus and has been healed by Jesus himself. So wherever you are, even if you're in a hospital looking to me, I don't know how you came across this message, but somebody needed to come across this message at this time so that your faith could be stirred up right now. Get up out of that wheelchair. Get up out of your deathbed. Get up out of that depression. Get up out of that defeat in Jesus' name. And a rise and shine and a rise and walk. Whether it's you physically walking or you spiritually walking, it's time for you to walk this thing out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, I got a, I got across it. I might have hit one of my points today that I thought I was, but I'm telling you, man, my God in heaven. My God, my God, my God. You need to begin to worship God. You need to begin to thank him right now. Say, Father, I receive it. I receive everything. I receive. You better dust that. You better dust that page off, that thing that you wrote. Pull that notebook out again with that vision in it. Pull it out again. Pull it out again. Pull it out again. Well, how can somebody in their 60s do this in their 70s? Pull it out again. Didn't God bless Abraham and Sarah to conceive in their old age? And listen, he came out of the blue. And then it was still 25 years after he initially came that the promise was fulfilled. Mm -mm -mm. God will keep you alive to fulfill what he created you to do. 
It's time for you to get started on it now. In Jesus' name, get started on that book now. Go ahead, let people know what it is. I'm telling, I'm telling you, man, you better hear me. <laughs> there is favor across the board. Favor has been released. Doors have been opened. As you begin, God has leveled playing fields like you would not believe. But you are still looking at the old way of things being done when the fresh and the new has come. The word of God says your door shall not be shut day or night that the wealth of the Gentiles shall come unto you. God has stuff already available to you while you sleep and money is being made for you. It's coming into your accounts that you are growing and increasing. You make an impact at the same time. That listen, some of y'all think in order for you to make impact, you got to be broke. I rebuke that thought pattern in Jesus name. That is a lie from the pit of hell. And don't you let no theologian try to talk you out of the abundant blessing that God has for you. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Satan is trying to come to kill, steal, and to destroy. Your lineage is blessed. God bringing you out of the ghetto. God bringing you out of the hood. And he's going to cause you to go back and transform it. You can buy the land that you're currently living on and transform and change it for the better. Why not? Why not? How come it can't be done with you? Come on now. You got to start thinking bigger. You got to start thinking better. You got to start thinking bolder. Some of you like, Pastor, I'm just trying to get out of my current situation. Well, believe God for that then. I'm with you. I'm with you. And as you come out of that, your faith going to start growing. And you're going to begin to see, wait a minute, I can believe for bigger and better. I can believe for more. Come on out of it. Come on out of it right now. Come on out of it right now in Jesus' name. Well, I tried to get a job and they just, they just ain't nobody hiring. Listen, create your own job. Create, do something. Listen, there's something you can do. God will give you witty inventions, ideas. Watch this. There are plenty of people hiring. Now, let's deal with something. Do you really want to work? Ask yourself the question. You say stuff. See, watch this. The Bible calls the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Watch this. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You can fool people, but you can't fool God. He knows. He knows. He knows when you lazy, you got to get that laziness out of you. And you got to start walking discipline now because some people are afraid of success. You're afraid that if I get success, successful in this area, then this is going to be required of me all the time. Yes, it will be. That means you're going to have to be consistent in your work ethic. You can't be lazy and receive all of the fullness of God's promises. So now it says, okay, now is the time to go for it. See, people shout for harvest, but harvest time means it's work time. It means it's time to gather in what's already there. But if you stand staying at home and looking at TV and you binging all the time on TV all the time, and listen, you got to have your mind working and sharp. You've already spent four hours binge watching where you could have been developing your gift, developing your vision, developing your skills, setting up the structure, getting things in order to receive what God has for you. It's time to shift. It's time to shift. So you got to see how Satan brings things into your life to woo you and to cause you to become complacent and stagnant. And I rebuke complacency and stagnation in the name of Jesus. Your fire coming back. Mm. Alive. You're alive and well. Glory to God. Amen. I, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Glory to God. Man, I disturbed my faith up. Man, I don't know about y'all. I've been blessed today. <laughs> I pray that you have too. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye cold. She come a la base te go ba se te coma. Yeah, la 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 bo she te coma se te coma se te coma se te coma. I'm talking about such favor that is mind blowing favor that God is releasing to you. God is preparing gifts. People who have been crooked. It's like I'm just seeing. It's like I see cars on car lots that the prices are being reduced to just pass on to people who believe in form. God is reducing prices and bringing up your income. He's doing one or two things. I'm telling you now, things are changing and rearranging for your good. People keep saying, well, this is a seller's market. Well, I declare it's a buyer's market right now for me. It, listen, it's, it's favorable for me. It's favorable for me. Everywhere I go, it's favorable for me. I don't care what happens with everybody else. It's favorable for me. It's favorable for me. I'm going to find what I need. Listen, the right place at the right time with the right people. 
everything I'm believing for is going to manifest in Jesus' name. So you might as well go ahead and believe for it too. You might as well go ahead and believe for it too. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Many infallible proofs. So, Father, we thank you and we give you praise and we give you glory for it. And we believe we receive this word. We receive it by faith today. And we expect to see the goodness of you in the land of the living. We expect to see it manifest. Everything that we're believing for manifesting in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Show her the basit to come. There's a mother, maybe somebody out there that's believing for your child or going to private school. Believe God for the money. Believe him for the increase. In Jesus' name. Believe him for the increase. Believe him for the increase. Show her my shit they can. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead, bring that up some more from me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need healing, believe him for it now. Yeah. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise in advance for this word. We thank you for your prophetic utterances. We believe we receive it. We give you glory for it. Hallelujah. Now, there may be somebody out there that you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you want to today. Listen, come on into the family of God. We receive you right now. God loves you. His arms are open wide. See, so many times you've been taught that God is this big judge in heaven, just ready to find fault with you to send you to hell. That is so not true. He sent his son to die for you. Jesus, who died for the sins of the world, that all may come unto him. Listen, y'all, Jesus died for you. He was raised from the dead for you. The Bible declares, if you confess with your mouth, in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you go confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness or right standing with God. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. When you declare this thing, that now I'm going to lead you into this prayer now, this prayer of a confession of your faith, that when you pray this prayer of faith, there will be a transformation that takes place in your life, in your heart. See, you are a spirit being. Man is tripart. Man is a spirit. He possesses a soul, the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions, and imagination. He lives in the physical body. See, the spirit man is the real you. You've been created in God's image and after his likeness. The Bible says God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So when you confess Jesus as your savior, the Bible declares that you become born again. You hear that statement, being born again. Then now, okay, God, I'm brand new. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new now. That's you, and you've never done that. He said, well, I was brought up. Then I got to confess all of my sins in order to make it to heaven. But listen, I brought up in, in Catholicism. I was been brought up in Buddhism. I've been brought up in these different things, these different religions. But listen, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. That no man can come to the Father except through me. Jesus is the door. He is the only way. So I want you to pray this prayer. Say this, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. I have eternal life. My sins have been forgiven. I'm a new creation in you. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, saints. Praise God. Listen, welcome, 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 welcome to the family of God. 
If that's you and you made this confession of your faith for the very first time, we want you to contact us. Let us know, hey, I'm saved now. I'm born again. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. We want to help you grow in Christ. We want to minister the word of God to you. You can send us an email message at info at spiritofire.us. That's info at spiritofire.us. You can also just instant message us wherever you are right now on our Instagram page at spiritofire.spiritofire1, spiritofire I believe. Or you can do it whether it's Twitter, whether it's on our YouTube channel. Send us a message. Let us know our Facebook. Let us know I'm born again. We want to contact you and love on you and help you to grow in Christ. All right. So we thank God for you. Now, this time, there may be somebody who you don't have a church home and you want to get connected with the ministry to help feed you. And I know everything has been crazy this past year with the, uh, this pitiful pandemic that's been going on. But we thank God that for the because of the blood of Jesus, we have been made free. We are healed, healthy and strong. But we listen, we know, listen, we're not. We're not exempt from compassion and empathy and sympathy. And we know that things have been hard for a lot of people. But listen, this is why God has the fivefold ministry gifts, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors, and teachers to teach the people of God, to help you grow and develop in your faith. Wherever you are, you don't have to be here in Richmond, Virginia. No matter where you are, whatever country you're in, no matter what state you're in, we want to welcome you as a part of this global fellowship. This is why the Spirit of God told me to call it Spirit of Fire Fellowship. That it's a fellowship of believers coming together from all walks of life. That we will begin to train and develop this people to go subdue nations and to now conquer every sphere of influence that there is in this planet. God is saying, arise and shine now. He's like, you know what? I need to be up under an anointing, a ministry like this. You know, I need a pastor in my life. Listen, you need pastors in your life to teach and to train. That's part of the pastoral office. They're called shepherds. You know, we're under shepherds. Jesus being the chief shepherd. And we want to minister to your life. So if that if that's you and you want to connect with us, go ahead and reach out. We have somebody get in touch with you to show you how to go through that process. Very simple, very simple. Listen, I don't believe in making things complicated no more. It's like, let's, let's simplify the process. You know, sometimes we, we, we made... This life in Christ looks so hard. And it's time out for that. We want you to have a relationship with Jesus. Not just a bunch of rules and regulations and laws. But I'm telling you, life in Christ is free. It's fun. It's enjoyable. Listen, I'm telling you. Listen, we all go through things. Situations come up. But just know this. God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm there with you to help you overcome every obstacle because you are more than a conqueror. I'll always cause you to triumph in any and every situation. And so we want to teach you how to live by the principles of the word of God. Praise God. Well, y'all at this time, we want to give you an opportunity to sow. This is our time. Our worship experience is not complete. Uh, we want to continue in our worship and our giving. Giving is a form of worship. And so we want to honor God in our giving. So there's some uh, some information coming up on your screen of different ways for you to give and to sow in the plant. And now we do believe we just trust God um, for those that God has called to help support this work, to minister to the lives of people. And so I think we have a, a new um, platform that we use, a new uh, way of giving, uh, which is a QR code. I believe that's up that you can scan that QR code where it'll take you to a giving page where you can sow there or you can give by text or cash app. Um, I believe it's given by text as well that is on there. Um, is, is it on there? We'll make sure. Yeah, okay, given by text is on there. So you see the different ways that have popped up. So um, we just want you, whatever God tells you to do, do it. Um, and so we trust God with you for the corresponding return that as you give, it's okay to expect to receive. Give, and it shall be given back to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. God says, I'll cause men to give unto your bosom. We believe that we're a good ground to sow into in this ministry. And we believe that God will begin to bless and increase you more and more, even as you sow and as you give. And so we thank you for that opportunity. So even allow us to minister to you and your financial support will allow us to grow in, in our outreach efforts and to expand the ministry to what God has for us to be. 
And so we just thank you for your continued support. We love you and we thank God for you so much. Let me just have a quick word of prayer over you, even as you're giving. Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name. I pray and I speak over every seed sown. I pray right now that you're causing debts to be canceled and removed and dissolved and wiped away and paid off. I declare and decree new jobs, new contracts, new businesses opening, flourishing, and that you're causing raises and bonuses to be released to your people and that increase is taking place in their lives. We thank you for a sufficiency and supply because you said that you are minister to those that are sowers and that you also provide bread for their eating and also multiply their resources for giving. So we just ask right now in the name of Jesus that you begin to manifest yourself strong in the area of their finances and every other area of their lives that their seed will impact and affect. We give you praise, glory, and honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, folks. Well, y'all, I'm out of time. Certainly not out of message. We love you so much here at Spirit of Fire Fellowship, where we are changing a culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. We declare God's favor over your life, that God will cause, I mean, supernatural turnarounds and miraculous breakthroughs, even in the midst of great impossibilities. So on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, and Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia, where Jesus is Lord. And we love you guys so much. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Peace.